It's been a great weekend here at uh, Lajitas in the Big Bend region. Uh, came out to the Big Bend to explore what we're calling the Texas last frontier, uh, to expose people to the vastness and the vibrancy of this region. We started things off on Thursday night with a movie and dinner. Uh, we heard from Laura Jennings from Texas Parks and Wildlife Department about the history of the region going back 10,000 years. Uh, we watched the river and the wall. On Friday morning, we got an introduction from Congressman Will Hurd uh, and his perspective of a district that runs about 800 miles of the Texas-Mexico border uh, and about eight national parks. Nature is not a destination, it's actually our home, and we need to conserve it for, for future generations. And being able to do things like deal with uh, deferred maintenance of our national parks, uh, making sure we keep our parks accessible to kids, um, is, is really important. Then heard on our first panel from uh, Tim Roberts from Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, Dr. Lewis Harvison from the Borderlands Research Institute, and then Bonnie McKinney who works for CEMEX and has a long history in uh, land management and conservation both in Mexico and in Texas. They spoke about uh, the natural and cultural resources of the region and a, a lot of the, the current efforts um, for restoring uh, wildlife habitat and wildlife in the Big Bend region. It, it really is the last frontier. It's really one of the last places where we have great habitats, uh, ranch sizes that are uh, tremendous, that are still scalable with respect to the, the wildlife we have here. And obviously the diversity of the region is just, just off the charts. Working with private landowners, working with conservation agencies, uh, federal, state, whatever, everybody working together uh, because it's gonna take that. Uh, to conserve our biodiversity and our lands, uh, that's, the, that's for our future generations. For the Economic Drivers panel, we heard from Bobby McKnight uh, from the Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association, who also happens to be a rancher. Stuart Ramser, who spent some time uh, as an economic development officer in Alpine and uh, has since started a music festival. We also had um, Greg Hennington from Far Flung Outdoor Center, which is providing a lot of the activities while we're here. We learned about the changing economy here from mostly livestock production to now uh, much more of a tourism focus. Like most of Texas, the first people here were agriculture, farmers, ranchers, and it supported these communities for a long, long time. The agriculture has evolved and uh, it's still an important part of this economy and we still do a lot to keep the towns going, but uh, tourism certainly growing. People are finding their way out here and, and um, the more that people discover it and want to get away from the big cities, we don't want to change this area too much. Um, there is a beauty about it. Um, there is a lot of authentic um, small town feel and if you get big chains coming in or you get some of that um, more of the corporate feel, then it changes things. After that panel, we heard from some of the law enforcement in the area, from Sheriff Ronnie Dodson from Brewster County, uh, Captain Alanis from the Texas Department of Public Safety, and then Roberto Dominguez from Border Patrol. They talked about uh, the realities of um, their day-to-day -day, uh, enforcement of um, the Texas-Mexico border and some of the misconceptions uh, of um, the reality is on the ground versus what's portrayed in the media. I think just the fact that the Lyceum brought their group here um, to Lajitas and they're getting an opportunity to maybe get onto the river or, or the border, but really getting a, get a good perspective. You know, it, it's not what sometimes it's being uh, categorized or uh, pol politically. There's no issue on TV anymore that, that uh, actually comes back to you know, the border and, and how it's been dramatized in the media and stuff like that. Yes, there's problems, and I believe as a government, there's fixable problems. We are part of this community. This is our community. So border security and, and doing our job is very important, keeping people safe at night where people can, you know, feel comfortable closing their doors and going to sleep and not worry that something's going to happen to them because, um, because we're in the area uh, preventing all that from happening. At lunchtime, we heard uh, from uh, Blair Fitzsimmons from the Texas Agricultural Land Trust, Marita Marzatuni from the Cynthia and George Mitchell Foundation, and then Carrie Dupuy from the National Parks Conservation Association. The panelists talked about the challenges that Texas faces and the 
efforts that multiple parties, public, private, are embarking on to conserve the last wild places in Texas. Texans uh, care about this region, especially the, the Big Bend region. Um, it is the last sort of frontier and the last wild place in Texas. Those working lands provide the, the resources, the, the benefits, if you will, that all Texans enjoy. One of the biggest problems that we're facing is a lack of funding for that, for those conservation of lands, um, funding for just overall operations at the national parks, funding for staff. Many of our national park sites are understaffed. On Friday night, we had a fireside chat with Carter Smith, the executive director of Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, and he really brought into focus uh, not just the natural vibrancy of this particular region, but also some of the recent wins with Proposition 5 uh, and, and funding for our um, public parks. Getting out and enjoying the best of Mother Nature, whether you like to hunt or fish or camp or kayak or bird watch or just enjoy the night sky or go for a leisurely walk, is in our estimation the best way to help develop an appreciation for why we need to steward it, conserve it, and pass it on to future generations.